Do you play the piano and can you reach the tenth? If not, this video will blow your mind, so make sure that you stay until the end. Before we get started, let me quickly spend a minute speaking about the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by the Jazz Piano Step-by-Step -step course, the most comprehensive jazz piano course online. It took five years to prepare for the course and eight years to make the course. And now it's finally complete and we believe that you won't find anything like it on the entire internet. To find out more and sign up for a 14 days free trial, click the link in the description or check out popjazzonline.com. Hi! Let me ask you something. Have you ever wanted to do something that you simply cannot do? I mean, when I was a kid, I dreamt a lot about flying and I grew up watching Superman play by Christopher Reeves fly over the world and even out to space. But then, of course, I realized that it was all just a fantasy. And then later in life, I discovered a jazz piano and to me, playing jazz improvisations was just as big a mystery and a miracle as someone flying like Superman. But then, of course, I soon realized that I could never fly, but I hoped that I could crack the jazz piano code, so I started seeking answers. And one of the first things I did was to get a MIDI file and I ran it through some hardware and software that showed exactly what the pianist was playing. Now it was straightforward, or at least I thought it was. I watched and listened to what they played and all I needed to do was to play the same thing. And copying from others is an essential principle for learning to play jazz piano, something that I still do and I teach others to do. Because we learn to play jazz piano primarily based on learning from the masters, the pioneers, and they learned the same way by listening and imitating the pioneers and masters of their time. And one thing that you may have to think about is this. Since many of the early jazz pioneers were men and most were American men, the jazz piano styles evolved to fit their hands. I did not think about that when I started to learn to play jazz piano, so one of the first tunes that I started to learn was the tune As Time Goes By. I found a MIDI file and I put it into the software and then I started to copy what the pianist played. One of the first chords was an F7, and of course an F7 is where you play an F, A, C and E flat. However, it's also common to omit the fifth, so now you play F, A and E flat. But wait a minute, the pianist that I tried to copy played uh, the A up an octave, and that's the first time I ever saw someone playing the tenth interval. And that was fine with me, but there was only one problem. I could not reach the tenth at the time. You see, I was born with a major handicap. I cannot straighten out my pinky fingers. So when a normal hand can normally stretch like this, my hand looked like this. All my fingers are entirely normal except my two pinky fingers. I cannot stretch them out. And as you can imagine, having pinky fingers like that was extremely frustrating. Especially when others who did not even play the piano could reach the tenth without trouble at all. Like my friend Martin. We became good friends at the age of 15 years and Martin is a doctor and a guitarist. And you might have seen him because he also played in one of my videos, Amazing Grace. Martin's hands are enormous and I've always thought Imagine what I could play with his hands. And honestly, these thoughts have been haunting me for a very long time. I even considered quitting playing the piano at some point, but I'm glad that I didn't. Another student of mine, which also is a doctor, introduced me to one of Norway's leading hand and finger specialists that took a closer look at my hands and pinky fingers. And he concluded that it was not a good idea to do anything about it. It might hurt more than it could help. So I ended up not doing anything about it. After all, I was already a professional uh, jazz pianist and a teacher then. In other words, it was a risky thing for me to do something about it. So I was stuck with the fingers that I had for the rest of my life. It was simply bad luck, or was it? Do you really have to have a large hand to be able to reach the 10th? Now, let's hear what some uh, great jazz pianists have said about it, and uh, let's start with Dick Hyman. Uh, somewhere between Hines and Wilson is what I'd love to play if I had any sort of technique at all. But not only do I not have the technique, I haven't got the hands. You've really got to have a, a stretch of a tenth, haven't you? So you can do that walking tenth upwards. Well, 
It, it certainly helps to uh, be able to do that, but I don't know if it's the size of the hand so much as the flexion, the, mm -hmm. how much you can stretch out. We could work on your hand a bit. <laughs> Maybe it's special equipment. As you can tell, the Kaiman says that it helps to have a hand that can stretch out, and it's more important than the size of the hand. And by the way, I have seen the Kaiman in another video where he plays the 11th. Can you believe that? That's one more key than the 10th, for example, C to F. And reaching a C to F is insane. At least to uh, someone like me who can only reach a 9th with my pinky and my thumb. But it's not like you'll have to be able to reach the 10th or 11th to be able to play jazz piano, is it? Let's hear now what uh, another hero of mine said about it. The following is from an interview he did with Andrew Privin. You have a, a, a huge hand. What, what can you span easily without trying? Easily 11. Yeah. Filled out too? Yeah. Mm. You, don't, you don't have to break it. You just come up from above like that. Yeah. Oh my jazz. Oscar Peterson can also reach an 11th without any effort. Life is not fair, but uh, there must be something that you can do about it, right? So I started googling around and I found some exercises that you can do to uh, solve this. And here is Jesu Molina's tip on what you can do to solve the issue so you can reach further. This exercise, I'm pretty sure you never saw it. I do that all the time for a stretch. You see? And don't look the keyboard. And This is for a stretch this, because this is gonna stretch someday. Well, well, well. This is going to stretch someday, he said, and I'm now in my mid-40s, and I don't think these hands are going to get any bigger anytime soon. Let me try now with my electric piano, the same exercise, and now I'll use my pinky finger. So this is the same exercise as Jesu Molina, and by the way, he is a great guy and a great talent, but as you can tell, his exercise is impossible for me to play. I can only reach the 9th with my pinky finger, but the goal for the exercise was to be able to reach the 11th, which I simply cannot do. And for me, the only way to reach an 11th is to jump. But of course, if I was to jump, I could also jump to the 12th and the 13th and so on and so forth. So unfortunately, I would have to drop this exercise altogether. As you can tell, there is no way I can do that exercise of Jesu Molina, at least not if I'm using my pinky fingers. Not only is he going after the 10th, but the 11th. But as many of you have pointed out in my other YouTube videos, I can reach the 10th. And I do that a lot, for example, in my bebop video. Some of you watching my videos have noticed that I play the 10th with my left ring finger instead of my pinky. Now you know the reason for that. I cannot reach the 10th with my pinky fingers, but I can reach the 10th with my ring finger. So what I've done a lot is to do stretching exercises. There are plenty of exercises that you can do to stretch more and reach further. And I think I've maximized my potential. By the way, another thing to observe is that the distance between the 10ths is different for most of them. Yeah, there are major tenths and minor tenths, but uh, it is a lot harder to reach the tenth from a white key to a black key or from a black key to a white key than from a white key to another white key. Also, you may not have noticed, but uh, the distance may vary too, even if the tenth is from one white key to another black key. For example, D to F sharp has a smaller distance than B to D sharp, and the reason for that is the placement of the black keys. You can use a ruler and check it out for yourself. If this is new information to you, I didn't know about it before a student pointed it out. If you have short fingers, or like me, you have fingers with a handicap like an unstretchable pinky finger, there is a solution to the problem that you may not have thought about. But before I show you what I mean, let me tell you a little story. This is Peter, John and Susan. They all live in the world of piano players, even if none of them are playing the piano. Let me illustrate what I mean and let's start with Peter. Peter loves to cycle and he wants to become a professional cyclist. However, Peter is very short. No problem, you might say. Can't he just use a smaller bike? But the problem is, Peter lives in the world of piano players, so the only option is to cycle with the available bicycles, even if they are not optimal for his size. And his friend John has a different problem. He is a large man. Since he is a large man, his feet hurt. You see, 
John is also living in the world of piano players. And that means, of course, there is only one shoe size. So even if the shoes are too small for his feet, he is forced to wear them if he wants to wear shoes. John's girlfriend, Susan, tries to support him as much as she can. And by the way, she also wants to learn to play the guitar to help John get distracted from the pain he gets from his too tight shoes. So then she buys a guitar as well as some guitar lessons. When she meets her teacher, who pulls out the guitar for the first time, she realizes that the guitar is far too big for her. You see, Susan is a tiny woman. And after all, even if she wants to play the guitar, she still lives in the world of piano players. And in the world of piano players, there are two important rules. And these are rule number one, one size fits all. If you don't fit in, you only have to adapt. After all, thousands of people before you have adapted, so why shouldn't you be able to adapt? Rule number two, you cannot break rule number one. Tradition is important and rule number one should not be challenged because of tradition. End of story. I hope you agree that the piano is a fantastic instrument. I only see one big problem and that is for various reasons the piano producers concluded that it would be best to agree on a standard piano keyboard size. And that was done because of touring pianists could then have a similar keyboard no matter where they played and that of course made sense at the time. Now the pianist could go from one piano to another piano and play the same repertoire without any time to adjust and of course that makes sense. However, the touring pianists of the 19th century were primarily men. Also in classical music most composers were men, but as you might have realized by now, not all pianists are men, thank god. So take a look at this hand. This is a normal female hand and as you can tell her hand is pretty stretched out to play that octave. Or this is my hand playing an octave, as you can tell uh, I cannot stretch out my pink fingers. And here is how I would play the ninth and I can barely reach the ninth and I can dream about reaching the tenth. As you can tell, I cannot reach the tenth with my right finger, but uh, this lesson is called how to reach the tenth if you can't. And how do you do that? After all, there is a limit to how far you can stretch with your fingers, so what else can you do? Believe it or not, you can actually move the goalposts. That's right. We need to move out of the world of piano players, or even better, we need to bring common sense into the world of piano players. In the real world, you would uh, get a bike that fits your size, you would get shoes that fit your size. If you drive a car, you would adjust the seat to fit your size. And since you play the piano, all you need to do is to find a keyboard that fits your hand size. But is that even possible? Well, it turns out that it is. Pianists for alternative sized keyboards or PASC have uh, worked for years to bring common sense into the world of piano players. And honestly, before I discovered them, I didn't even think of getting a keyboard that fit my hands as an option. So after doing some research, I found that there is one man in the world that could make keyboards that made sense. His name is David Steinbuhler. Hi. So of course I contacted him and I also joined uh, the Facebook group for Pianists for Alternative Sized Keyboards, PASC. It turns out that David Steinbuller could make a keyboard for my Yamaha C3 Grand Piano without new measurements since he has made several keyboards like it before. But before I ordered, I discussed it heavily with a friend of mine who also happens to be the CEO of one of Oslo's best and largest piano stores. And to make a long story short, he was highly skeptical of the idea, but he gave me a great support. He also contacted several piano manufacturers and discussed the case with them. The piano manufacturers had never heard about David Steinbuller and uh, they were highly skeptical of the idea. The reason for that is the extreme curve on the keys themselves, since you don't bring the strings closer. Here is a normal key on a regular keyboard, and this is the curve needed on a David Steinbuller keyboard. As you can tell, the angle is pretty steep and it makes sense to be a little skeptical. I understood their skepticism, but at the same time I decided to have the ability to make music that I had in my head, fortunately won over the skeptic piano manufacturer's opinions. So then, I decided to invest in the keyboard after all, and I ordered it with the mentality that uh, if things were not working out, I could always return to my previous keyboard. And by the way, more on how much it cost in a bit. So, of course, I also checked with the 
Pask community and they've had their pianos for years without any significant uh, trouble. And just so you know, because of the skepticism from the people in the piano industry, I decided to wait a long time before I now made this video. So, to make a long story short, I bought the keyboard and since Steinbuller would have to make the keyboard, I would have to wait a few months before I got the keyboard. And honestly, I was extremely excited about it. And to not underestimate how excited I was, this is the biggest thing that ever happened to me. It was a way bigger experience than uh, getting my first grand piano, because up until the point where I could afford my own grand piano, I had been playing on dozens of other grand pianos that all had oversized keyboards. And if you're not convinced yet, if you would offer me a top model of a Steinway grand piano with regular keys, and in return you would get my uh, Yamaha C3 with a keyboard now that fits my hands, I would not do that exchange. Not at any price. Or perhaps if you gave me a billion dollars. As I said, this was extremely exciting. Once I got the piano in my house, I installed the keyboard right away. Getting the keyboard was one thing, but I also needed a piano technician who would have to go over the keyboard and tweak it to fit my piano. And also, by the way, my piano technician was amazed of the quality of the keyboard and I ordered a keyboard with new hammers as well. So this made my Yamaha C3 Grand Piano sound much better. Now, before I show you what I can do now with this keyboard, you should know that it comes in several versions. To compare, an ordinary keyboard has six and a half inches from one C to another. And then you can get a Steinbuller keyboard with 6.0 inches. Now everything is slightly closer. And you can also get the 5.5 inches, and that's the one I got. Now, an octave is equivalent of playing a C to B. In other words, you can play an octave with a lot less tension. And then, of course, if you cannot reach the 10th right now, you can probably reach it with the 5.5 inch keyboard. But that being said, it's not only about playing the tenths. Some chords, for example an F sharp minor 7 played in root position, are challenging for me to play on a regular keyboard. It sounds simple to play, and it is, provided that you play on a keyboard that fits your hands. This is what it looks like on my Steinbuller keyboard. As you can tell when comparing, there is far less stretch on the Steinbuller keyboard to play the chord in a relaxed manner. That was the ending of Artadium's Tiger Rag, and uh, this is something that uh, I am still working on. I would never be able to play that on a regular keyboard. And the reason for that is uh, that uh, he had enormous hands, and if you want to play just like he did, there is no way that you can do that without either having a narrower keyboard or you have very long fingers yourself. The intro of that uh, tune goes like this. So even in the beginning, the first chord is really hard for me to play. I could not play that on a regular keyboard, so here is the intro, that's an F sharp. Same here, right? So all of these chords that he is using with, especially left hand, is very stretchy. And then it goes to uh, this part. And even though you're just playing a ninth with your right hand here, I would not be able to do that on a regular keyboard. So, one of my dreams when I got this keyboard was to be able to play Artatum, and uh, now I finally can. I have had the keyboard now for two years, and I genuinely love it. So, then the question becomes, do I recommend it to you? And the obvious answer is to make a big yes, but with a big but. It depends on your hands and your fingers. If you can already reach a tenth, I would not bother changing unless you have a handicap like I have. Also, you should take into consideration how thick your fingers are, because now since all the keys are narrower, that also goes for the black keys. So for example, if you play a chord where you'll have to stretch your fingers to go between the black keys, for example, if you play an E flat chord like this, as you can tell, it's pretty tight, so if your fingers are not that thin, you may encounter some problem. In other words, you should test a grand piano with narrower keys if you're not sure. Another thing that uh, you may have a question about is, how easy is it to change between the regular sized keyboards and uh, the narrower one and back? 
In my experience, it was not hard to do the change, and I can just speak for myself, but it just took me a few days to get used to the new and way more optimized keyboard size. And that was after 35 plus years of playing on an oversized and regular keyboard. And I still play on my electric piano sometimes, and switching back is not hard at all. After all, I've been playing on an oversized keyboard for my whole life, and just after I got the new keyboard, I recorded the new version of the Launch Jaspian Masters course on that keyboard. Absolutely no trouble. To compare, on my computer I switched from using the QWERTY keyboard to something called Colmac DHM. And in short, that is about changing the regular computer keyboard's key placement to something more ergonomic and better to type on. And relearning how to type on my computer keyboard took me way more time than relearning the distance between the piano keys. But what if you are a professional pianist that goes on tour a lot? Can you then expect uh, concert venues to have different keyboards? In an optimal world, yes. But we are far from there yet. The demand for it must come from you and me who are playing the piano and teaching music. To see the change, you and I can demand smaller keyboards from the piano manufacturers. And uh, if you think about it, and I hope that you agree, it is a no-brainer. People are having different sizes of their hands, and why on earth does almost nobody take that into account? I believe we need a revolution, and the revolution is coming, I think, starting with you and me. It was worth it for me to invest in a new keyboard, but honestly, it was not cheap. So what is the cost? If you consider getting a piano that fits your hands, it costs around $14,000 plus shipping. Then you also need to get a piano technician to tweak the keyboard several times. That also comes with a cost. So you may end up paying $15,000 for a narrower keyboard that you can get to your grand piano or upright piano. The question is, is it still worth it? For me, yes, definitely. The quality was excellent and I have not experienced any trouble over the two years that I've had the piano keys. But what about getting an electric piano instead? I'm glad that you asked. And quite recently the Nord Stage 4 came out and as far as I've seen it's incredible in many ways. So uh, do I want to get one? It is not a surprise but the piano only comes with oversized keys. At least uh, the keyboard is too large for my needs. But uh, if you are looking for an option to get an electric piano without oversized keys the best option is to check out narrowkeys.com. I am currently on a waiting list for the digital piano with a keyboard that fits my hands and of course I will keep you posted once I get it. And by the way, since these are custom made, the price is also premium and uh, you can find a link below if you're interested. I hope you found this video to be useful, maybe you got some food for thought and you should know that uh, you're not alone if you have small hands, short fingers or both. Actually I would go as far as saying that most people that I've met have been playing on a keyboard that is not optimized for their hands. That goes for children and adults and especially women. And if you think that your hands are too small, I hope you, instead of saying that your hands are too small, that you start to say that your piano keys are too large. There are options out there, and for now they are pretty expensive. My wish is that it will change sometime in the future, so maybe some years from now when you order a piano you can choose of course the piano type, as well as you can choose the keyboard size. Anything else is not making any sense to me. So let me be brutally honest with you. I can only speak for myself now, but after I have been playing on a keyboard that is much better suited for my hands for two years, playing on a regular keyboard feels like a joke. A terrible joke. And if you are skeptical of the idea of an alternative sized keyboard, you will always find examples of excellent pianists that plays on a regular sized keyboard with small hands compared to the keyboard size. For example, Michel Petrucciani, Liu Wang and Hiromi Uehara are all examples of excellent pianists that are outstanding piano players without a big hand. So let me get that out of the way once and for all. You don't need a large hand or long fingers to play the piano well, even on a standardized keyboard. 
But if you are skeptical about the idea of uh, choosing the keyboard size, imagine that the people who decided on the standard keyboard size made uh, it so it would fit Rachmaninoff's hands. If you don't know Rachmaninoff, he had enormous hands and he could span from C to G in the next octave. So if you're still skeptical, now I have a challenge for you who are skeptical of the idea of keyboards in different sizes. Imagine that they decided to make a new standard keyboard size, but this time they decided to make it even larger than today, so that uh, you would now uh, only be able to reach an octave. How would you feel about that? I hope you agree that uh, it would be a bad idea, but I'm also confident that uh, just as there are today people who are excellent piano players with today's keyboard size, you would probably find pianists that uh, became excellent also with 20-30% uh, bigger keys. But the question is, wouldn't it be easier to have a keyboard that fits the pianist's hands, even if it requires a little bit more work? The concert venues would have to include uh, different sizes of keyboards. For example, uh, the pianist then can request uh, to play on a small keyboard, medium keyboard or full-size keyboard. It would also mean that the uh, music schools would have to have uh, pianos in various sizes that fit the pianist, not to speak about uh, the music school for kids. I think it is about time to discuss the issues seriously and I've had uh, students over the years with various hand size and many times I've seen my students with small hands being very frustrated. And just as you would find a bike that fits your size, it is not possible to find a keyboard that will fit your size. But honestly, the keyboards should come with a warning. Once you find a keyboard size that fits your hands, you will never go back. So just as in the matrix, if you take the blue pill, you will never be able to undo what you have experienced. If you want to stay in the traditional world of pianos, or if you want to discover what up until now was not even thinkable, I will leave that up to you. But I have come to realize that we need a revolution amongst piano players all across the world. And I hope that this video can contribute to that. Now, I will leave all of the relevant references under this video and uh, I have not partnered with any of the resources. So if you buy from them, just say hello from me. I'm just happy that I can be of help. One last word in all the seriousness. I will leave you with uh, some photos of my uh, friend Martin playing uh, with his very large fingers on my tiny keyboard. And just for fun, for you who watch this where you don't have any issues with uh, a large piano keyboard, I challenge you now to play the same chords the same way as you'll see on the screen soon. This is just for fun. With that, I hope this video was informative and helpful to you, but more than anything, I sincerely hope this video made you think. So, I hope to hear from you. What do you think? Is having a keyboard size that fits your hands and fingers a no-brainer, or should we go on for the following centuries, leaving the business as usual, where so many must keep on struggling unnecessarily, just because it's always been like that forever? Again, I hope you'll let me know what you think. You can leave a comment below if you want and also subscribe to the channel. That will help me a lot. Whatever you do, take care of your music and practice a lot. And I will see you in the next one.